I've done a couple videos on these air tunable type capacitors lately and some of the problems are they're getting real expensive, they're getting really scarce. When you can find them, a lot of them are factory rejects with problems, they're damaged or they just never were good out of the factory. So yeah, becoming hard to find. These mica capacitors aren't really much better, they're becoming hard to find. The price is almost the same and yeah, I mean, this is technology from when I was a kid. We're talking antique level stuff. So what can we do about this? I mean, uh, if we want to build our, our crystal radios and we want to use capacitors, how are we going to do that? Well, I think I have a solution for us. Let me show you what I'm thinking. Here is one way we can build our own capacitors using very commonly available material. You probably recognize these. These are platters out of a hard disk and I'm only using two right now. These are 9.5 centimeter. You may say, well, typically you want a sweet spot capacitance of about 350, 360 picofarads, but these are not entirely flat right now. So if I add just a little bit of pressure, you can see, yeah, it goes up to 400. That gives us some wiggle room for either air gap or, or uh, an insulator between them. And yeah, so this meets uh, our requirements. It's cheap, it's readily available. It's not something high tech, it's something available just pretty much everybody. And it's workable. You definitely want the aluminum platters, not the glass. And let me show you how you can tell the difference. We don't really want a glass disc because, well, they, they break and they don't really have much uh, current carrying capacity. They'll have high resistance because everything's just going traveling through the surface of the disc. So how do we tell if we have a glass disc? Just get a flashlight or a bright light source and shine it underneath. And if there's a defect on both sides, you'll see, see that spot right there? Yeah. Uh, so this is a glass disc. And if there's no defects on both sides, you'll have to carefully scratch it, wear gloves, whatever, in case the disc is glass and it breaks on you. Yeah, take precautions, treat it like it is glass until you know it's not. Okay, so then you would make a scratch on both sides roughly in the same place and shine your light and see if it goes through. And uh, that's the best way to detect if you got glass. Right now, I'm at the stage of trying to figure out how to best make this into a capacitor. And there's different strategies. Uh, some of them have been used, some of them I just thought about. Uh, one of them would be, for example, to drive a wedge between these two and you would just poke a little wedge in there and the farther in the wedge goes, the more it opens. The thing is that these are not linear. You have to be able to keep these plates really close together at some point to get maximum capacitance and then spread them. And with a wedge, you're always going to have some opening no matter how fine the wedge is. So the wedge could either be pushed in by hand or it could be screwed in. Okay, so that's the wedge. Uh, a similar thing would be a cam where you have some overlap like this and you have an offset cam and it causes it to open and close like that. Uh, there's a screw type where basically the same thing where you could either have a screw pushing up on the lip of this and or you could have a screw down the middle on these two separate plates and of course, by turning the screw, it would cause the plates to open and close like that. Um, then there's a circular slide, which they have used in the past. And you merely put a, a pivot point like here, and then you put a handle on it. And then you rotate the two pieces like that out of the way. Of course, that takes up a lot of real estate. And finally, there's just like the air tunable type you have these two things that are sliding past each other like this or like this to create the change in capacitance. So that is where I am right now. I am trying to figure out a good mechanism that anybody can produce at home. Uh, I don't want something that requires a machine shop, uh, something like that in order to produce it. But uh, yeah, common materials, common you know hand tools, whatever to produce something like that. So I am going to keep working on that uh, aspect of it. And when I get it done, I will make another video and show you what I've got. If you've got any uh, creative ideas or 
then uh, feel free to post a video and let us know about that. Okay, well that's it for now. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your radio explorations.